Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Scott Melbourne. I am the director of the Schneider Museum of Art, part of the Oregon Center for, for the Arts here at Southern Oregon University. Today, we're going to talk about our online and virtual exhibition and how to navigate that content. Starting with the Schneider Museum of Art's website, which is sma.sou.edu. Going to our website, if you have not been here in a while, please give us a visit during this time of COVID-19. We've been been producing some additional online content, such as our creative industries discussion, uh, workshops, as well as artist-to-artist -artist conversations. Many of these are uh, provided for our museum members and volunteers only, which is recorded, and then a couple weeks later, uh, we do put them up on the website to be viewable by all. If you are not a member and you would like to become a member and join in on the fun, click the join and give, and you can go to the SEU Foundation, the Stan Museum's uh, donation page, and become a member of the Stan Museum of Art. Going back to the exhibitions, here is the web page on our website for the exhibition Celebrating Wild Beauty. We are highlighting the artwork by Isabella Thorndike Church, Grayson Cox, Dot Fisher Smith, Malia Jensen, Chris Russell, Rick Silva, and Mark Try. We do have all of the images in the online virtual exhibition here on the website. But where you are going to want to start is here. This is the on online readable catalog. If you prefer a hard copy and you have a printer at home, you can print this. Please note that the file is a large file and may take a little while to um, download as well as print. Below that is our virtual gallery. Please note that browser Google Chrome is what this platform works best on. I've learned that when I click here to allow the virtual gallery about 10 plus minutes to fully load. The images are uh, large as well as the video content. Same thing with the online viewable catalog that takes just a moment uh, to load. So here's the online catalog, Celebrating Wild Beauty. This is where you are going to want to go to first. Here are the better representation of the images. Please note that for Isabella Thorndike Church's work, which was originally intended for the Treehaven Gallery and the Schneider Museum, which is a 20 foot by 20 foot square gallery space, so that Isabella can execute uh, an installation for it to be documented and included in the online exhibition, we used, it, used an empty storefront downtown Ashland at 25 East Main Street. This installation is still installed. If you could pay Ashlyn a visit and see uh, her installation, um, I think you would enjoy that. So I'm just gonna scroll through the catalog a little bit. This is where we have better resolution of the images, written content. Also for the video works, we have links in the online catalog, where in the virtual gallery, the videos are just clips. We do have um, information that can be cut and pasted into another page from the virtual gallery if you wanna uh, view the videos that way. But here you are going to wanna click on the links for the video works, which will bring you to the better plat platform for watching the videos. Please note that when you click on those links, you do have to go back in order to get back to the catalog. Also, I'd like to add that any videos I watch that have audio, you are not going to be able to hear the audio on your end. Anything you hear will be my computer's microphone picking up noise from my computer speakers. 
I would also like to add a, a note that for Dot Fisher Smith's images in the online catalog and virtual gallery, we were unable to get our hands on Dot's work to have the work professionally photographed. The images that we do have were from a studio visit um, by myself with Dot and taking photos with my iPhone. So we did the best we can to clean up the images so that uh, Dot would have a pres presence in the exhibition. I felt as though her work, her sensibilities, really contributed to um, a all around um, impression that we're trying to put forward uh, of the exhibition and artists' uh, intent and ideas. So once again, video click uh, links here that you can click on. Going to be the best place to watch the videos. As opposed to the virtual gallery. You're gonna to wanna to go back again to get back into the catalog and continue your, your scrolling and your reading and viewing of the artwork uh, in the exhibition. I'll talk more about the artists and the artwork when we view the virtual gallery. And as I said, when you click on the link here for the virtual gallery, you might want to give that a good amount of time to fully load. So click the link, go make yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notebook or sketchbook to sit down and view the virtual gallery, um, allow everything to load. Um, it's gonna give you the best um, uh, time in the virtual gallery um, if you have that done. So as I move the mouse around, you see these little feet, when I click the mouse, it's gonna move me to that location. And if I click the mouse and pull and drag, you can move around the space. Be aware if you click and drag up or down, um, the space will move as well. And it could, be, could make you a little, a little dizzy. When you bring the mouse over the images and click, it will pull you to those images as well as give you this little thumbnail as well as the uh, art artwork label information. And just as we do in the Schneider Museum of Arts um, physical spaces, for each of the artists, one of the labels will have uh, a statement by the artist. And just to begin, the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument is a great source of inspiration for Dot Fisher Smith, who is currently 92 years old. She lives and works here in Ashland, Oregon, and has lived directly next to the monument for many years. If you pull and drag to the side and click another image, it'll bring you once again right over that image. Here we have the thumbnail and information. Also, please note the dimensions of the artwork for the sake of comfortable viewing in the virtual galleries. The images might, uh, such as this one, appear a little bit larger than it is in, in real life. Okay. And what we are looking at with Dot, Dot's work in creating her art, she uses canvas salvage from the meditation yurt she had on her land. Canvas marked by lichen and streaks from the rain. The work is not executed plain air. It is gleaned from memory and experience. Dot writes, it's all about allowing, allowing myself to be flowing with what my eyes see and what my body is telling me. Her canvas are meditations on the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, as well as mountains and valleys that she has hiked around the world. As you can see here, this piece is actually 10 inches by 16 inches. So when you are in the virtual gallery, 
If you are turning around and you see an artwork across the room you want to zoom in on, click on that artwork and it will just automatically pull you to that work and load the label information here. If you prefer a little bit of distance, you can back up and view multiple pieces at once. This is the artwork by Chris Russell, who is known for writing his modified 10-speed titled The Art Rambler, which is designed to be both a bicycle and plain, ear, uh, plain air easel around the Portland area. He captures nature in traditional and unique ways, with the exception of his interior, paint, interior paintings, you almost never see anything man-made in the work, just pure landscape of wild spaces. Russell's oil and linen paintings lend a sensitivity to the materials and the subjects. He often leaves exposed linen as the ground and emphasizes the living flora of the, in, the, in the foreground bringing the beauty of what he sees right up to your face. There are luscious greens, dots and streaks of vibrant flowers, draping mosses, and hints of blue skies. I think the work is brilliant and alive, and although it's not hyper real, you feel the sun on your face when you're viewing the work. You can almost smell the rich soil of the ground. Jumping over to Mark Tribe's work, Mark Tribe's practice has made a major shift into investigating climate change and working towards climate justice. As Tribe writes, climate change threatens every living being on the planet. He uses his artwork in hopes to create a powerful aesthetic experience that is to be added to a conversation started by scientists. So for Mark's work in the virtual gallery, we have photos, as well as a one minute video clip. So as you can see here, clicking on an image across the gallery, it's going to pull me over uh, to that image. Along the wall, if I jump over to another artwork and click, it will pull me to the front of that artwork. With the assistance of the Schneider Museum of Art, an Oregon Community Foundation grant, generosity from the Friends Group of the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, and Bureau of Land Man Management's Monument Interpretive Specialist, Christine Beekman, as well as the Artist Own Kickstarter campaign, Tribe was able to spend a week in the monument and captured a 24-hour high-definition digital film. This film will be available for generations to come. This is the one minute clip. The audio of this clip is of birds. You, once again, you are not going to hear this as my speaker, my microphone on the computer is not gonna pick up the audio from the speaker. Due to COVID-19, Mark Tribe and his post-production team have been unable to complete the digital film they have not been able to get back into the studio and, and, and wrap it up. Uh, but when it is completed, Mark is making available to the Shannon Museum of Art um, an addition for the museum's permanent collection. Mark writes, in this work, I am interested in the traditions of Western landscape painting and photography and how they reflect our changing ideas of what the natural world. If, for example, we understand the paintings of the Hudson River School and the frontier photographs of Carlton Watkins and his peers as expressions of manifest destiny, 
what kinds of landscape images might flow from the ideology of environmentalism and an age of climate change and mass extinction. As we come to realize that even the wildest places are being transformed by human impact. Just to take a step back and view Mark's photos again. Also capturing 4K digital footage of the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, artist Rick Silva uses the monument as part of a series of digital films titled Western Fronts. In Silva's statement about the work he writes, in the fall of 2017, a memo was leaked from the United States Department of the Interior. The memo outlined plans to drastically reduce the borders and protections for four Western national monuments. They are Cascade Siskiyou, Gold Butte, Grand Staircase Escalante, and Beers Ears. On December 4th, 2017, the administration signed presidential proclamations eliminating protection of public lands and sacred indigenous sites in Grand Staircase Escalante and Beers Ears National Monuments. Beers Ears alone was slashed from 1.35 million acres to 200,000 acres, reducing its size by 85%. In the summer of 2018, mining companies staked claims for oil, gas, uranium, in both Grand Staircase, Escalante, and Beers Ears. So once you go to the videos, when you're in the virtual gallery, when you click on them, up here on the left, in the label window, here is the volume. That is how you turn up the volume. You can pause the video, push play. If you are watching a video and you leave the volume up and playing, as you turn away and move away, that audio will continue. So before you leave a video, you will either want to turn the audio down or pause the video. So with Rick Silva's Western Fronts in the virtual gallery, you can see here um, the videos have their own running times, but we are utilizing 30 second clips. Also here, in the label, if you do not want to go back to the catalog, you can highlight, copy, open a new window, paste it in, and watch the video there. So as I mentioned in the catalog, Isabella Thorndike Church's work is installed in the storefront downtown. In order for her to have a presence in the virtual gallery, we utilized a few documentation photos and placed them here. Later this month, we will, we will be scheduling an Instagram live conversation with Isabella in the uh, store and storefront to talk about the artwork. For the sake of online viewing, Malia Jensen offers us a 24 minute preview that is linked of her project, Nearer Nature, Worth Your Salt. This is a six hour video, which is comprised of 24 hours of footage, which began in the spring of 2019. Jensen created a series of lifelike carved Salt Lake sculptures based on parts of the human anatomy, and she laid them across Oregon. Motion activated cameras captured the exchanges between the Salt Lakes and wildlife. 
Jensen's intentions is for the footage to be placed in unsuspecting alternative spaces such as taverns, hospital waiting rooms, laundry mats, and movie theaters. She's bringing art, nature, and the unknown to audiences, just as wild animals come across her Salt Lake sculptures and get an appetizing dose of salt, we get a delightful experience ourselves by seeing what takes place in human absence. Audiences may follow along and view more of Jensen's Instagram page, which is nearer nature underscore project. So once again, with the video work, there's audio, which you can turn up, pause, before you move away, turn the audio down or pause the video. These are stills from Malia's project here and here. We have a creative industries discussion with Malia recently recorded in conversation with myself and museum members and volunteers that will be up on our website in about a week's time. Going into what would be considered our Tree Haven Gallery, we have the work of Grayson Cox, who brings us back to us, the human in the landscape. Cox creates a modern day portrait of ourselves by way of anthropomor anthropomorphizing the to-go iced coffee. Cox utilizes the iced coffee as a transitional object, one that invites the viewer in with familiarity. It helps us see ourselves in the work and relate to it more readily. This continues in the piece titled Alexa, Alexa Allegra, where Amazon's Alexa, as well as the artist uh, Allegra Allergy Medicine, sit side by side on what looks to be grass in front of a hazy glow. Getting some distance to view this piece over here. Cox carries forward the tongue in cheek in the piece titled Khakis. The, in the artist creative industries discussion, which can be viewed on the museum's website, Cox talks about the khakis as a representation of people who make policy decisions. Moreover, it appears to be more specifically about male policy decision makers. Cognitive dissonance is prevalent in Cox's work, as well as other underlying and coded meanings. So with this piece here titled Existential Iced Coffee, which is made of acrylic on linen, painting here, oil, acrylic and India ink on wood. So this is a three-dimensional object, almost a, a frame around the painting. Vacuum formed plastic, silicone, and silicone dye. So the iced coffee you see here is not real iced coffee. It is actually a sculpture made by the artist using silicone and silicone dye. We have Grayson's artist statement in the label here. And scroll up and down to read. And continue viewing the artworks. So that brings us through all of the galleries in which we touch on all of the artists. Now you can feel free to uh, play around a little bit more in the virtual space. Once again, please look at the online catalog first. That's gonna be the best representation of images. Please click on the links to watch the videos. That is going to be the best representation of the videos. And to finish, I would like to say thank you to our sponsors. Thank you everybody for joining us and being members of the Shannon Museum and for being volunteers and viewing our exhibition celebrating wild beauty. Thank you.